differences in shockwave therapy treatments and this question actually pops up because there are quite a few differences between the types of units so we have more of the focused we have the radial that spreads the energy it can be created through either a mechanical let's call it pounding of tissue driving or electric or uh, electric or sound that helps push energy into the tissue well the other variables that we have are the pulses per second how fast how many times is that energy getting into the body per second or per minute? The surface area involved. Is it a large surface area or a smaller surface area? And then the type of energy transmitted per pulse. So these are the variables that we have between the different types of units. Now we think about what does that take to get from a therapeutic standpoint? Well, first, the body can only handle so much. And different tissue can handle different levels of energy and how deep. You know, how big and how hard do we swing the hammer? Certain treatments are going to push that energy deeper into tissue, especially the focused that I described more like a laser beam that's going to get straight in one zone and the energy is going to get a little deeper putting some of its effects versus a radial that's spreading the energy out over a greater area, more of a cone energy distribution to get that transmission of energy and that stimulus through a wider area, but maybe not as deep. So the Jenner, we talked the focus, that high concentration laser beam tends to reach more of the deeper tissues versus the superficial, meaning closer to the skin. You know, that energy also produces a little cavitation where you think of energy kind of blowing bubbles of just a mass kind of boom, little baby grenades in there. Radial shockwave tends to have a larger, more dispersed, so more superficial to deeper with that energy spreading out over that time. We have a little less problem with the radial because it's not as focused. Because there's less energy at any one spot, there's less risk of overdoing areas. And that might be one of the negatives you've ever heard from people who went through shockwave and either had a really bad experience or 10 years ago or so we'd hear a lot of, I walked into the office with plantar fasciitis, but I needed crutches to come out. It was just too much energy hitting the tissue, created too much pain, inflammation. They overdid the stimulus. Because of that, the energy overwhelmed the body and the person had a greater problem. So those number of pulses per treatment, these are still variable and it's a little bit of a learning as we go through here of not just how much can an elbow handle, but how much can a young elbow versus older elbow handle. A bigger, thicker, stronger forearm is probably going to be able to handle more energy than a older, thin forearm. So there's a little bit of a balance trying to figure out how much treatment can we get away with, how much can we speed it up, because we want to put enough stimulus to cause repairing, but not so much stimulus that we cause trauma. So that's that balance on trying to mechanically trigger those cells to go and start repair and healing. So we're using those mechanical forces to hit the tissue and kick it up and make it start healing and repair. Sometimes it's breaking down a little scar tissue, vibrating the tissue, whatever the mechanisms are. And I know people have heard the phrase, sometimes you have to break a bone to make it heal right. Somebody had a fracture, it didn't heal, they went back in and rebroke it to trigger those healing mechanisms. Well, that's common with bones, and people have heard that for a long time. They just don't think about soft tissue that way. Can we get muscles, tendons, and ligaments and cartilage to repair and heal through these same mechanisms? So the types of treatment, no one is bad, no one is definitely better than another. It kind of depends what are we treating, where we're treating at. Radial might take a little bit longer than a focused. But then there's the cost value too. Radial treatments tend to be a little less expensive than the focused. So it's that Goldilocks and the three bears, right? We got to put the right amount of energy in to get the stimulus we want, trigger the healing and repair, but not so much that we cause a problem such as breaking down the tissue and destroying it or not putting enough stimulus into you to not get any adaption or repair out of it. So we got to find that just amount of right stimulus. So you can learn more on Shockwave on our Shockwave treatment page off our website or link back to the study to read it in greater detail. Likewise, there's more information available on our knee treatment pages, especially how do we use Shockwave with treatment plans and how does that energy get combined to help provide the greatest therapeutic benefit. Or you can get one of our knee, low back, elbow, shoulder, or wrist books online or on Amazon. Thanks for listening. Have a great day and like and follow for more.